Don't start yet. I'll tell you <laughs> when you can He's just start. Gonna start. And then I need to. Can you move slightly to the left? All right. Perfect. But I'm Perfect. not always going to be to the left. Okay, like this. <coughs> Perfect. And now. Now I can synchronize the audio things because that will be in the audio. I you know, can see it I know. There you can go now. I can? Mm -hmm. Whatever I want? Yep. Okay. Hello, my name is Jane Powell. I welcome you to my tutorial on story development. I'm a creative writer and I just love a good story. It may not look like it, but a lot of effort goes into creating a story that keeps readers hooked you need to have a solid base, flow to your story, conflict, reaction, and great characters. In this tutorial, I'll show you how I go about planning my own storylines. There are many ways to plan a storyline, but this is the one that works for me. So, moving on, story development. So the first thing you need to do is decide who you're writing for. So who, um, who will be reading your book? Who's your audience? Develop your story according to the interest and age of your audience. So we need to describe in as much detail as possible the status quo, the main themes, the disruptions and crises, and the reactions and resolutions. At the end of this tutorial, I'll, uh, I'll post a, uh, a poster that describes these in detail. Just because most of you know the Harry Potter story, I'll be using Harry Potter to illustrate my building points. So first we're going to start with status quo. Since this part is really hard to draw, I did it in advance. <laughs> so this is your status quo, okay? Your status quo includes the time period, setting, social political situation at the beginning of the story, and characters and relationships and values. So, so for Harry Potter, the status quo at the beginning of the story included England, because that's where it is set. And it was set in the 1990s. And it's all about a guy named Harry Potter. Ooh, I'll just... Okay. So it's also based at the Hogwarts School of Magic. And it includes a hidden, that's a hidden magical world that muggles, uh, normal people are not aware of. And it includes magical creatures too as part of its setting in its world. So yeah, it's a hidden world. Unknown to muggles. And witches and wizards live there. That's part, they are part of our status quo. Magical creatures. And also good versus evil. That's a huge theme in the story. And it's also part of our status quo because that's mainly what people believe. That um, either people are good or people are evil. Blood lineage is a huge part of the status quo because depending on what family you're born into and whether you're from a uh, you know, a muggle family or a magical family, and whether that magical family had roots far back will make a difference on your status in this story. And that's there from the beginning. And then we have the Malfoys, Draco Malfoy and his family. And they come from a very traditional family. They go far back and they have a lot of influence over the magical world. 
So they are also part of the status quo at the beginning. And this story is, the protagonist and the story are all teenagers. Well, mainly, and then you have a few magicians and, or wizards. And Dumbledore is huge in this story. So his, uh, the way he influences the story throughout, right from the beginning, makes him part of the status quo. As well as Voldemort. Okay, so here we have our status quo. So this is right at the beginning of the story. Uh, before you know anything else about the story, the author creates, um, creates the status quo, the, you know, the setting, what's going on right initially at the beginning of the story before things in the story start to change things. As the story goes along, then, um, then the beginning will change, the status quo will change. But this is what we have initially, and we really have to know our status quo really well. We have to know what we're working with before we can move on to the next part of the story. Okay? So the next part, I like to look at as like a volcano that hasn't quite erupted yet. So, since this one is easier to draw, I'm going to do it. Well, I have a bit of help. I, do, I did outline. Those are the mountains in the background. Okay, and we have some lava coming down. Okay, that's our lava. Okay, so this part of the story I call like the un, didn't, the volcano that has not yet erupted is called the main themes. It contains the main themes of our story. Okay, so the main themes uh, in Harry Potter and the main themes of our story, they're the messages that uh, you're going to relay to your readers. So the thread that keeps your story together. Okay, so you have to know that really well as well. You have to know exactly what, what the point, what is the point of you writing this book? Who, who are you writing to? What messages do you want to relay? Okay, so J.K. Rowling wanted to talk about fate. That's one of the themes. Harry's parents die because they were fated to help save the magical world from evil as is Harry when he is marked with a scar and gains power through it. Okay, and he is fated to fight Voldemort. Fate is a theme throughout the story in many ways. Okay, so another strong theme that she wanted to talk about was death. Okay, so wizards in Harry Potter, wizards die fighting for what they believe in is the right path. Voldemort lusts immortality, friendship and loyalty is more important than life. There is beauty in death by the end of the story, especially if you die saving good from evil. And th this theme is really uh, strong throughout the whole story. In fact, um, I read an interview by J.K. Rowling and she said that death was the strongest theme throughout the story, in her opinion. So she wanted to talk about death. People die to protect good and they lust for more morality, immor immortality in the story. Okay, love is another big one. So uh, the only thing in this story that can conquer love is dark arts, but it never really manages to. Love always seems to uh, win in the end. It's the only thing that can conquer, yeah, the dark arts. As long as Harry hangs on to love, his faith in himself doesn't waver. When he feels connected to his parents and friends, for example, he is strongest. OK. 
Okay, so the next one, the next big theme in Harry Potter is confronting fears. Okay, so confronting fears. So Harry saves the Sorcerer's Stone from Voldemort's grasp by first confronting his fears in the mere water thing that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so he confronts his fears. And then that's a theme, like now I'm talking about the first book, but that's a theme uh, throughout all the books. It's all about confronting fears. And by the end, he confronts his fear of death and is actually willing to die for, um, for others. Okay, another big theme is good wins over evil. So um, there seems to be a recurrent theme in Harry Potter that um, basically if you do the right thing and you're good, um, almost always uh, you'll win in the end. Whereas if you are crooked, um, it usually comes back to bite you in the ass, especially if you're Draco Malfoy. Okay, and then there's um, a fight, well, these go together, fight against intolerance and intolerance, and, and sorry, intolerance. So there seems to be like a, like there's an ongoing fight against intolerance. Draco Malfoy's family is very intolerant of others. Uh, they're, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of bullying against muggles, and for example, Draco bullies Hermione because she is muggle-born, so she's not a born uh, magician or a witch. Um, she's, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call mud that? Blood. Mud, mud blood. Mud blood. Well, mud blood would be, yeah. yeah. So anyways, there's a lot of discrimination and uh, intolerance, um, but there's this continuous fight against it, and intolerance never wins the day. Um, and then there's tolerance on, say, like, Harry and Hermione and Ron's side, they, they work very hard on themselves to tolerate Draco, Malfoy, and his buddies, um, you know, Probably. shit, <laughs> to be blunt. And then, and then the other recurrent theme is to be true to yourself. As long as Harry remains true to himself, good prevails. He wins the day. So these are the main themes in Harry Potter. So J.K. Rowling spent a lot of time working on those themes before she started writing the book. Because in order to write the book, you have to, you have to really know what your themes are, why you're writing the book. This is your, the passion in you that got you to write the book. What do you want to say to your readers? Okay, so the next, the next, are the crises. Okay, so the volcano explodes. Woo. Okay. It's exploding all over the place. There are big disruptions, so every story has conflict and disruptions and, uh, and usually has a big main crisis. Okay, so this section, um, so it includes events that disrupt, disrupt the status quo. Everybody's having a nice old time here being normal and then something happens and they have to change their way in some way whether they have to change their way of doing things or the way of thought, they react in some way to the disruption and then the status quo changes. So, um, and events that change the storyline for the same reason. Something happens, it's like a, like a big you know, pothole in the road or, or a washed away road and then you have to figure out a new path. Stories are like that as well when events happen. Um, events that cause self-growth in characters as well. A lot of events cause self-growth in characters um, and events that demand a reaction. 
And then there's the main crisis in the story. So usually you have like a bunch of little crises or conflicts, you know, before you have the main crisis. And this is also what happens in Harry Potter. Okay. So, um, as we know in the first book, the Harry's parents have been killed. Okay, so this is a big one. This causes a change to the status quo. Okay, and Harry is placed in an abusive foster home. Okay, this is a change too. And Harry discovers he has magic. This all of a sudden gives him some power with the Dursleys. The Dursleys are the are his adoptive parents, his uncle and aunt. Okay, and he's being bullied by them. But then when he finds he has magic, ooh, he has some power there. He notices that he he has a little bit of control, whereas before he didn't feel like he had any. Okay, when Harry moves into Hogwarts, everything changes. Okay. At Hogwarts, he meets, uh, he becomes part of a community and he meets some lifelong loyal friends, Hermione and Ron, okay, which are very important to his future missions. And then Harry joins Gryffindor House, which is known for its bravery. And when he joins Gryffindor House, his two friends Hermione and Ron also get accepted in and so um, the friendships get stronger, alliances get stronger and because Gryffindor House has such a great reputation for bravery they are well esteemed by the other, uh, by the wizards and, and witches, teachers and other houses. Okay, so then at one point, Harry acquires an invisibility cloak. And with this invisibility cloak, he can get all sorts of stuff done. Um, you know, he can, uh, he can uh, get past Voldemort without being noticed. Um, he, can, uh, uh, he can do all sorts of stuff that he needs to do to win the day without being noticed. And he keeps this visibility cloak throughout most of the books. So it's, it's a very important event. And then in the first book at the end, Voldemort attacks Harry. And this is a really big event too that demands a reaction. Okay, so now we move on to the reactions. So the reactions are um, so how have you, how have the disrupting events changed the status quo? So how have they changed the characters and how have they changed the storyline? Okay, so we'll draw some characters for you. Happy character.
Okay, so these guys are all happy because they're good and good always wins the day in Harry Potter. <laughs> okay, so... So how will these guys be affected by all these disrupting events? Okay, well, because they have each other, uh, he, Harry has met his lifelong friends, and he's also got an invisibility cloak. He's part of a strong house, Gryffindor house, which is full of brave people. Uh, and he has magic, like the rest of them. So the fight for good gets stronger, and these guys are super happy about it. And lots of alliances are made, which are really important when you're fighting evil. So these guys are pretty happy about that too. The friendships get stronger, because when you go through all those types of challenges, friendships get stronger. Um, they figure out where the Sorcerer's Stone is, and uh, Harry tricks Voldemort and saves the Sorcerer's Stone from his grasp, therefore also saving the world from evil. So we have the Sorcerer's Stone, and Voldemort's attempt at the stone is thwarted by these happy people. So you have it. Um, this is how I create my storyline. I know it's kind of like, uh, you know, creative in the sense that uh, you don't really need the volcano, you don't really need to draw anything at all, you can just scribble stuff on paper. But I find that when I draw things, um, I, can, I think about the process as I'm drawing it. So I recommend it. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Mm. Okay, so um, I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm also going to post some material um, on the film at the end. So uh, stay tuned for that and thank you so much for watching uh, and I hope you watch my next tutorial which will be all about character building which is my like one of my favorite parts of, of, um, of um, <laughs> of writing stories. <laughs> I'm losing track now. Okay, thanks for joining and see you next time. Bye! How many minutes was it? It was? Mm -hmm.